welcome back. It's summer reading week seven. We're almost there at the end, okay? This week and next week will be our last two of summer reading. I hope you've enjoyed all of summer reading. I know it's a little bit different this year, but I hope you've had as much fun as I have with you all. Now, for this thing for this week is adventure, okay? So our book for the week is the Kane Chronicles, the survival guide issue. You've got this in your book bag for this month. Now, like I have said before, you can do not have to read any of these in order, like what I post them for each week. It is just, just the book of the week is what I put it as, okay? So, just enjoy your books, all right? Now, the Kane Chronicles Survival Guide is by Rick Reardon. And so we're gonna read a little bit about it, okay? Here comes trouble. Carter Kane's mother died six years ago, and since then he has traveled the world with this, with his Ejah. <laughs> Bear with me on this word. I have struggled with this word. Egyptologist Father Julius Kane. Meanwhile, Carter's younger sister Sadie has been living with her grandparents in London. Carter and Sadie meet again one Christmas Eve when their father takes them to the British Museum in London. Here he uses his influence to gain access to the valuable Rosetta Stone. He then performs a bizarre ritual that conjures shadowy figures and causes a massive explosion destroying the stone. Julius disappears leaving Carter and Sadie to discover that he has somehow awakened the gods of ancient Egypt, at least one of whom has evil intentions toward them, and it seems toward the rest of the world. And then, of course, it goes on to begin introducing the Canes to siblings. And then also throughout the book, let me show you a page. It shows it goes into a fictional story, but it also gives real artifacts in different Egypt, in places in Egypt. Like uh, one spot is, a, there's a sphinx in there, it tells about it, um, tells about the mummies and their ancient tradition. So it gives that non-fiction um, aspect as well. Um, so there's one about the mummy, and the, um, King Tut's coffin there. And so it gives real life um, pictures of different artifacts and a little bit of history. So it's a very interesting book. I think this is my favorite book of all summer reading just because I like different um, information about Egypt. It's one of my favorite places, uh, um, one place I would love to go. Um, so, but enjoy this book. It is a very small book, but enjoy it, okay? Let me know what you think about it. Now, since we're going on an adventure, I'm gonna let you all take an adventure. I have put in your um, your bag as a scavenger hunt. Try to complete it all in one week. Take pictures while you're doing it. I put 10, at least say 10 pictures. You can take as many as you like, just a few if you don't, um, want to do that, and send them to me. I wanna see you all doing it, so you can post them in the comments below of this video. I would love to see your pictures. Um, of you all doing the different activities. So don't forget to post pictures. I would love to see them. So, but it's very easy, the sca nature scavenger hunt. It's very, very simple. Like one could be a bottle top. There's um, a, a takeout menu, a spider web, animal tracks, a river or creek, a cocoon, a bee, a lost coin. Hopefully it's heads up a red bird, a flat rock, a cow, something shaped like a triangle, a boat. You're seeing many of those right now in the summertime. So that's just a few to name off, but there's your scavenger hunt. So have fun with that and enjoy that, okay? Let me know how it goes. Now, our activity for the, the day is, we're going to make, since we're going on our little scavenger hunt, if you go out at night, you're gonna need a light, okay? can't go out at night without a light. So we're gonna make fairy garden jars, okay? So what you should've got, you should've got a little jar, should've got a little sponge brush, a 
a, um, a little hook, I call it, I guess, to hang onto your jar. And I got a tea light. And all that is is when you put your batteries in, it may already have batteries be in it. Just flip it on and your light comes on. Um, you should have got a little small baggie of Mod Podge. And then your little cutouts. I think there was different shapes. Let me see. You should have got a dragon, a castle, and a fairy. So that's what we're going to use today. And we're going to demonstrate on how to do it. Set that to the side. All right. We'll let me eat that right now. Now, some of these little jars are maybe a little bit, that, but to make it clean, um, for the Mod Podge, just take a uh, paper towel and clean it out just enough to get the dust off. You can take a rag or a paper towel, either one you like. Okay, just enough to get that clean. All right, now what you'll want to do is you're going to put a little bit on the back of your of each one, okay? Just enough, kind of like glue. Mod Podge is, is just another kind of glue, really. So what you're going to do is just put a little bit on the back, enough for it to stick inside of your jar, okay? And then we're going to coat it. But first of all, we're going to stick it just like glue. Now, to be easier, you just pour yours out onto a plate. And it'll be easier, but I'm just going to go ahead and just dip mine in there. Like so. I'm going to start with my castle, and I'm just going to lightly coat it. Don't put a whole lot on it, because sometimes it kind of leaks through or seeps through. So just barely coat it, just so, like so. And we'll, now, we'll tell you, it will get messy. You definitely want that rag or that paper towel on hand. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to stitch mine. Uh, let's see, it's down here. There we go. It's about right there. Now I'm going to stick to my finger. There we go. Just like that. Now, if you see fingerprint, it's okay because we're gonna cover over on top of that, okay? Now the thing with this glue is, is that it will dry clear. So, ain't like regular glue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do our dragon. Like I said, just barely, barely brush that on. You don't need a whole lot of glue on it. Just barely put any on your brush, just enough for it to get it to stick to the glass. Enjoying your summer night. It's been really nice. Okay. Okay. Just like that. Now, what you want to do is like to get a little bit again, not a whole lot enough to coat the end of your brush and you're going to go inside of your jar and just brush it over your pictures the vinyl cutouts okay and it will get difficult I'll just tell you just a little bit but not much you want to coat all the way around just a 
the noun tropes. Now I know it looks bad now. <laughs> you know, it's like anything with um, Mod Podge does, but it will dry clear, so. And you can use regular, I'm using outdoor, just whatever I grabbed, so you can be, they've got other chimes, so. If you want to cut out more shapes, you can the further you do, and you just do all the way around. A lot of people do that. it don't dry out. Now what you'll want to do at home is you want that to dry before you put your tea light back in. But what you'll want to just do is you just turn it on once it's dry and just set it just right down in the middle just like so okay. And then you can put your pot back on. But I'm going to let mine dry for right now. Now we'll show you. Once you put your light, let me go ahead and show you. And I'll take mine back out. But for yours, you'll want to definitely let it dry first. So you can put it in there like so. Just the lid on. Then here's your handle. And you put it around the rim there. Whoops. Put it back to where it's going to be. Got your own small candle light, okay? So you can take this outside if you want to. If you're going to do your adventure outside, and that way you've got your own little lantern. And so, but for this week, that is our adventure. I hope you enjoyed this week. I loved your gnomes, by the way, for last week. You all did a fantastic job on those. Very creative. I love how the different colors you all used. Some of you all really did a whole lot with them and I'm, I loved them very good um, but I hope you enjoyed those and then next week will be our last week now I will tell you that you maybe have something coming in the mail this week um, some prizes for participating in summer reading all of you all got want something so those are coming in the mail to you all they may you may have already received them by now but for the ones that haven't they're coming to you so we will see you all next week